Hey there guys, welcome to the video. Uh, my name is Pushpinder Gill. In this question, in this video, we're going to be talking about the standard equations uh, of an eclipse. So in the previous video, uh, we talked about an eclipse. We defined an eclipse. Uh, we also talked about the relationship between uh, various semi-major axes, semi-minor axes and uh, the, the distance between the focus points. In this video, we're going to be talking about the standard equations of an eclipse. So let's just go ahead and draw an eclipse. Let's suppose this over here is an eclipse. And this is our major axis. Let's say this is A and B. And this is our minor axis. And since we're trying to find the standard equations, uh, in standard equations, we try to find the most simplest form of an eclipse. Uh, in the most simplest form of an eclipse, we will be as assuming this as the x-axis and assuming this as the y-axis. And let's suppose these are the two focus points that is F1 and F2 here. And uh, this, uh, let's say this is negative C comma 0 and this is positive C comma 0 because the distance from here till here is C. Something that we should know is the length of this major axis that is A and the length of semi-major axis and length of the semi-minor axis that is actually equal to B. Right. So that is there. And uh, now we have to find the standard equation of this uh, this eclipse such that a point is there uh, on the eclipse that is P and the coordinates of P are X comma Y and we have to find an equation of X comma Y here. Now how do we do that? Now if you have watched the first video on eclipse you would know that that the distance between PF1 plus PF2 so the distance between PF1 and PF2 so the sum of these distances is actually equal to the sum of distances of BF1 and BF2 that is actually equal to the property of that is actually the property of any eclipse that says that states that that the sum of distances from uh, or from two focus points of all the points is going to be a constant and we already know that this is something uh, the, you know because uh, BF1 it's uh, if we know that this is something which is C this is something which is uh, this is something which is C, this is something which is A minus C and we actually calculated this as 2 times A. This is, this is something that we've actually done in the previous video, in the first video of Eclipse. And uh, we have to find the value of PF1 and the value of PF2 in terms of X and Y now. Right. So something that we already know, so I'll just redo this one. Uh, BF1 is actually, B, it's actually equal to BF1, so this is B and this is F1. Uh, that is actually equal to this is a this whole thing is a and this whole thing is c that is actually a plus c and bf2 uh, is actually equal to so this is b and f2 that is actually equal to a minus c and once i add bf1 and bf2 i'll get 2a which is actually here now let's try to find what is the value of pf1 plus pf2 now uh, what is the value of PF1? So that is this distance right here, right? So let's try and fi find the value of this using the distance formula because we know the coordinates of P and we know the coordinates of F1. Using the distance formula, the distance is going to be under root of X2 minus X1 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 whole square. And the, the distance PF2 is going to be equal to under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So this is the distance pf1 and this is the distance pf2. And we already know that uh, this plus this is actually equal to this. So I'm just going to draw a line here so that we can do a little bit of manipulation. So we know that that the value of under root of x plus c whole square plus y square plus the value of under root of x minus c whole square plus y square is actually equal to 2 times a. Let me do a little bit of manipulation here. Let me say uh, I make this as the subject uh, this and I take this to that side that is 2a minus under root of x minus c whole square plus y square. Right. So that is there. And uh, so if I kind of square both sides up now, if I kind of square this side up, square both sides, what I'm going to get, the under roots are going to go away. So this is going to be x plus c whole square plus y square is actually equal to a square, which is 4a square plus b square, which is 
x minus c whole square plus uh, y square minus 2ab. So it's going to be minus 2ab, which is going to be minus 4 times a into under root of x minus c whole square plus y square. Right. So what I just did here is I kind of square both sides up. And now if we kind of uh, open this up, this is this part is going to be equal to x square. Uh, let me just do it with a different pen so that you understand all the parts. So the first part, it's uh, it's going to be equal to x square plus c square. So it's x square uh, plus c square uh, plus 2xc uh, plus y square, which is actually equal to y square, is actually equal to. So the next part is uh, going to be equal to. So kind of uh, open this up again. 4a square plus this thing it's going to be equal to x square plus c square minus 2xc and then we already have this this whole expression here that is minus 4 times a into under root of x minus c square plus y square now you can clearly see that x square and c square x square and c square are going to get cancelled out and uh, we are going to have uh, you know this thing is going to I'm going to take this to that side we're going to have this 2xc uh, this 2xc plus this 2xc is going to become 4xc uh, plus y square plus y square uh, uh, is equal to 4a square minus 4a under root x minus c whole square plus y square. So that is there. Okay, one more thing. They, there was a y square here, which means there was a y square here, which I missed. So this y square and y square is going to get cancelled out too. So this is what I have now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate this 4, eliminate this 4 and eliminate this 4. And we're going to get, I'm just going to write that in the new page. That is xc, it's equal to uh, a square. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this uh, a square to this side. So that is uh, minus a square. So xc minus a square is equal to uh, the under root, sorry, a under root, a under root of uh, x minus c whole square plus y square x minus c whole square plus y square right so this is what we have and uh, if i now square both sides again i'm going to get uh, again the same thing that is a square b square uh, that is a to the power 4 minus 2 a square xc is equal to a square uh, into x minus c whole square plus y square. So let's divide by a square and a square throughout to get rid of this a square here. And this over here is going to be x squared c square divided by a square plus uh, a square minus 2xc is equal to x square plus c square minus 2xc uh, which is this plus y square. This and this is going to get cancelled out. And uh, we're going to have x square c square divided by a square uh, plus a square, which is equal to x square plus c square plus y square. And if we keep on simplifying this, I bring this x square to this side. This is going to be x square c square like this. And uh, we bring the, the, the constants to that side. That is c square minus a square plus y square. And from here, uh, if we kind of take the x square as common, we're going to get uh, c square over a square minus 1. So we're going to get c square minus a square. That is equal to c square minus a square uh, plus y square. Okay. So now in an eclipse, something that you already know, that if you watched the previous videos, that uh, the value of, there's a relationship between c, a, and b. And uh, we actually found out the relationship that the value of c was equal to under root of a square minus b square. Uh, that is something that is an expression that we have actually found out in the previous videos. Uh, that means c square is equal to a square minus b square. And uh, which means that, uh, you know, in, in, this, in this here, c square minus a square, c square minus a square is what we're getting which means c square minus a square is nothing but which is negative b square. So if we substitute that in this video here, uh, sorry, in this in this part here, c square minus a square is nothing but which is negative b square. 
uh, c square minus a square is nothing but which is negative b square this is what we're going to get and uh, if we divide the whole equation by negative b square uh, this over here is going to be a x square plus a square is equal to 1 uh, minus y square over b square which means x square over a square plus y square over b square is actually equal to 1. So this is something which is uh, known as the standard equation. So this is one of the first standard equation of an eclipse. Now what do you mean by standard equation? Uh, the equation of an eclipse means that every point on this eclipse, every point on this eclipse is going to satisfy this equation. So this, you know, it took a little while, it took a little bit of manipulation, but we actually uh, were able to come up uh, with the relationship between x and y and a and b, where a and b are the, uh, a is the semi-major axis and b is the semi-minor axis. x and y are the points on the eclipse. So this is the equation, this is the standard equation of this eclipse, right? So just to, just to put that to test, we can actually pick up a, a kind of a point on the eclipse. We know that this point lies on the eclipse and this length is a, which means this point is a comma zero. So a comma zero is going to satisfy this equation. Let's put that to test. So uh, x square over uh, x square over a square plus uh, y square over b square is actually equal to one. We have to check whether a comma b satisfy this. So instead of x and y, we're going to substitute a comma b. So we're going to have a square over a square plus uh, you know, a square over b square, so it's a comma zero. So zero over b square should be equal to one. So this is one plus zero, which is actually equal to one. So that means uh, every point on the eclipse is going to satisfy this equation here. That is uh, x square over a square plus y square over b square is actually equal to one. Now that's one type of an eclipse. Another type of an eclipse can actually be something like this. So, you know, we had this eclipse here right now. What about this eclipse, which is kind of uh, symmetric with respect to the y-axis, uh, not symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is actually, which has uh, its major axis as y-axis and minor axis as the x-axis. In, in that case, uh, this over here, it's going to be, uh, you know, b comma zero. And this over here is going to be minus b comma zero. So the major a is going to replace b and the b is going to replace a. They're going to interchange their positions, which means the standard equation of this eclipse is going to be x square over b square plus y square over a square will be equal to one. Whereas the standard equation of this eclipse was x square over a square plus y square over b square will be equal to one. So the, the, the equation of this eclipse is going to be equal to this because A is going to replace B as the minor axis and B is going to replace A as the major axis. Just understand that when we say standard equations, we mean to say that the center of the eclipse, the center of the eclipse is at the origin and uh, the axis, X axis and Y axis acts like, acts as the, uh, what do you say, the axis right, the major axis and the minor axis, right, and they are perpendicular to the center, right, it's not at all deviated to any other angle, it's perpendicular to the, uh, to the center, right, because the major axis is perpendicular to the minor axis, that is what I want to say. So this, these are the conditions for the center of, you know, for, for the standard equation of an eclipse. Uh, right now, we are not doing how to find the equation of this kind of an eclipse. We are only doing the equation of this eclipse and this eclipse. And this is the equation of this eclipse and this is the equation of this eclipse. Another important thing that you should understand from this equation that, uh, you know, from this standard eclipse is that the eclipse is symmetric with respect to both the axes, with respect to the major ax axis, uh, major axis and the minor axis. When I say symmetric, I mean to say that if 2 comma 3 lies on the eclipse, let's suppose if I say 2 comma 3 lies on the eclipse, then negative 2 comma 3 will also lie on the eclipse, then 2 comma negative 3 will also lie on the eclipse, then negative 2 comma negative 3 will also lie on the eclipse. So generally if I say x comma y lies on the eclipse, the negative x comma y will also lie on the eclipse. Why is that? Because uh, if I say this is 2 comma 3, uh, if this is the length, 
and uh, you know since we know that if this is b this is also b so if this is some particular length x this will also be the same particular length x and we know that if this is c this is also c so if this is some particular length y then uh, you know it's going to remain the same for this also right so that means if x comma y lies on the eclipse negative x comma y lies on the eclipse x comma negative y lies on the eclipse negative x comma negative y also lies on the eclipse now another thing the another another property that we can actually identify from this equation that the foci always lies on the major axis you know because if i say this is the eclipse the foci is always going to lie on the major axis and uh, you know that uh, major axis is something which is uh, denoted by a you know that is the semi major axis so a is always going to be greater than b because you know it's a major axis so if i say x square over uh, 4 plus y square over 2 is equal to 1 then we know that this is the major axis that means the eclipse is inclined more towards the x axis and if i say x square over 3 plus y square over 9 is equal to 1 we know that this is the major axis that means the eclipse is inclined more towards the y axis it's kind of this kind of an eclipse so, you know, if A, in this case, if uh, coefficient of x, a, uh, x square is greater than coefficient of B square, so if I say if A square is actually greater than B square, then the eclipse, uh, the, the foci lies on the x axis and uh, if B square is greater than A square, then the foci lie on the y axis, right? So, I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here, guys. Uh, another thing about the, uh, you know, which we've already done for, uh, uh, you know, uh, parabola also, that is the length of the latest rectum. Now, what is the latest rectum for an, uh, for, you know, for an eclipse? So, let's suppose if I say this is an eclipse, right, and uh, these are the focus points, focus one point, point one and focus point two. Latest rectum, uh, it's, it's uh, going to be the length from here the length of a perpendicular that passes through the focus points like this. So let's suppose this is CD and AB. So we need to find the length of this focus, uh, length of these latest rectums. And we already know that the equation of this, uh, you know, this eclipse here is actually equal to x square over a square plus y square over b square to be equal to 1. Now let's do one thing. Let us say that this length here, that is AF2, uh, you know, that is half the length of a latest rectum. Let's suppose this is actually equal to L, right? And uh, we already know that that point A, point A is something which lies on the eclipse. So point A lies on the eclipse, which means point A will actually satisfy this equation, right? So point A is going to satisfy this equation. And uh, the coordinates of point A uh, are going to be, uh, the coordinates are going to be C comma L because the, the height is L and the distance from here till here is actually equal to C. So the coordinates are C comma L. If you substitute C comma L uh, into this equation here, we're going to get X square over C square plus uh, Y square over L square to be equal to 1, right? So that is what we're going to get. Oh, I'm sorry, just did that wrong. Uh, it would be uh, c square over a square plus uh, y square over uh, b square. That's not y, that is l square over b square. That will actually be equal to 1. So let's try to make l as the subject because we need to find the value of l here. So the value of l square over b square will be equal to 1 minus c square over a square, which is equal to a square minus c square divided by a square. And what is the value of a square minus c square? Uh, something that we just told you here, right about here, that uh, c square minus a square is actually equal to negative b square. So c square minus a square is equal to, so, you know, c square minus a square is equal to negative b square. And what is a square minus c square? That is actually equal to b square. So instead of this, I'm going to substitute b square, which means l square over b square is actually equal to b square over a square. That means L square is equal to B to the power 4 divided by A square, which means L is equal to B square divided by A. 
Now that is the value of L. So this is the value of L right from here till here. But the latest rectum is the distance from all the way till here till here. So we would know that CD is equal to 2 times L because an eclipse is symmetric with respect to x axis and y axis which means the length of the latest rectum is going to be equal to 2 times L which is going to be equal to 2B square divided by A. So the length of the latest, latest rectum is going to be equal to 2B square divided by A. So I suppose you are understanding this what we have done here. Now in this we will just summarize what we have done. Summarizing, uh, if this is an eclipse uh, and uh, we already know the you know where all A and B and C's are there. Uh, these are the focus points. This is C, this is B, and this hole is A. Then the equation of this uh, this eclipse is going to be equal to this. Uh, the equation of this eclipse is uh, going to be equal to this, right? And uh, the length of the latest rectum, uh, that is the distance from here till here and distance from here till here. So the length of the latest rectum. Uh, is going to be equal to 2b square divided by a. So these are the three important results that we have found out in this video. So I suppose you're understanding this point here guys that will be very helpful for you to solve a lot of questions on Eclipse and uh, this would be our website address to explore more about us. If, if you want to ask me questions you can ask me questions here and uh, this would be our Facebook page to give us your valuable valuable like. So thank you very much for watching this video guys and I'll see you in the next one.